Pastor Nathaniel Bassi is a gospel music minister from Akwaibom State, Nigeria. He is a recording artist, trumpet player, singer, songwriter, and music producer who was inspired at a concert by Dr. Panam Percy Paul several years ago. He serves as youth pastor of the Oasis, the youth church of the King's Court Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria. Before accepting the call of God to full-time music ministry, Nathaniel was band leader of the Steve Rhodes Jazz Orchestra, a member of the Spectrum 4 Jazz Quintet, and many other musical bands and affiliations. Pastor Bassi believes that music is primarily a fundamental tool in the praise and worship of God, and an avenue by which he, God, relates with his people. He expresses his deep love for God through his music, and features in concerts, crusades, church events, and other kingdom gatherings, and continues to lead many into the presence of the Lord. Inspiring the next generation of worship leaders and gospel musicians has also been a major focus of his ministry. His regular articles on social media and magazines are widely read in the gospel music circles, emphasizing the concept of a total and complete music minister with spirit, skill, and character. Pastor Nath speaks at worship and music seminars within and outside the shores of Nigeria. He is a passionate writer whose songs are being sung and performed as covers around the world. He strongly believes his songs must be Jesus-centered. Nathaniel's distinctly prophetic sound on the trumpet resonates far and wide, stirring a revival and passion to holiness, godliness, and heartfelt worship in the body of Christ. His debut album, Elohim, was recorded in 2008 in Cape Town, South Africa. He has gone ahead to release other albums since then. The Son of God, 2014. This God is Too Good, 2016. Revival Flames, 2017. Jesus, The Resurrection and The Life, 2018. And The King is Coming, 2019 with songs that have become church anthems, transcending racial, cultural, and ethnic lines and boundaries. In June 2017, he kicked off the Hallelujah Challenge, a one-hour online praise session which attracts participants from around the world. His most recent project, a 14-track album filled with spiritual and prophetic songs, Hallelujah Again, was released in April 2021 and has been a blessing across the globe. He is married and lives in Lagos, Nigeria, with his wife and their children. Just lift your hands to the Lord and bless the one who ascended on high and gave gifts to men. He's worthy of all the glory. No one, Jesus, there is no one, darling, there is no one. Jesus, there is no one else like you. No one, Jesus, there is no There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the heart. Lord, we lift these hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the heart, Lord, we lift these hands in worship as we lift your holy name for you are great. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like. There is no one else like you 
For you are great You to be your cold so great There is no one else like you There is no For you are great for you Minister to him. I'm in Kenya water. I'm in Kenya water. I'm in Kenya water. I'm in Kenya water. It means I am the one he saved. I am the one he lifted. I am the one he has helped. I am the one that the Lord has poured so much grace on. And I'm here to just give him praise. Can you permit me to minister to him? Just flow in the spirit. Hey, I'm in Kenya water. Oh, I'm in Kenya water. Oh, I'm in Kenya water. I'm in Kenya water. You are the one you saved, you washed in your blood. Your boy, your boy is here. Your boy, your child. Spirit of the living 
upon the deep suddenly you began to move and everything changed you are the breath of the living God you are the spirit of the most high God oh feel this place Ruach Elohim upon your people blast upon your people amen amen so by way of introduction I'd like to begin by saying that the theme of revival has been ringing across the world. If you are living in this day and hour, you know that we are in very interesting times. I'm sure that when we were wishing ourselves Happy New Year in 2019, we had all of this, I mean, you know, anticipation and expectation for 2020. You know, 2020 sounded very nice, very tush. It's like 2020 vision, you know, you know, all of this stuff, you know. So there were plans. But little did we know that we would be locked down. That, that you know, that nobody would go anywhere. That stadia stay would be shut, hospitals would be full, churches would be closed. Planes will not fly. You know, we didn't know that. So we are living in very interesting times. I mean, I remember one of those days, a woman, you know, like one of uh, the women who follow my ministry, you know, she lived in the highbrow area of Lagos. You know, like she called me and just I was so worried. She said, Pastor Nat, what is even this life? She said, I'm looking at my wardrobe, my clothes. I looked at my cars. I looked at my shoes. I've not worn them in two months. So what is all of this thing? When, you see, when push comes to shove, we know what really matters. And such is the time that we live in. Events in the last couple of months have shown that we are drawing closer and closer to the end of of time. If you doubt me, read Luke 21 from verse 10 to about 36. Jesus was, you know, was it Luke 21? Yes. You know, speaking about the signs of the last days. And right there, if you read the Amplified Version, he spoke about epidemics breaking out. So the pandemic was prophesied. You know, even though you know, there are various theories surrounding it. So these are the last days. And the event seemed to bear witness to Jesus' account in Luke 21, speaking about the signs of the last days. Darkness keeps mounting and intensifying in a manner never seen before. I mean, somebody was telling me about some schools in Scotland that now they are, they are allowing children as young as four and five to decide which gender they are. This is in our time. Around the world now, they tell you there are many genders. Crazy things around the world. Things that if they had told me, I would experience in my time. So we're living in the very last days. However, all of this also suggests that we also are in the midst 
of one of the greatest moves of God. For the light indeed shines in darkness. When it gets dark and dark and dark, it becomes the platform for you and I. Yes, it becomes a platform. It becomes a platform for you and I. It shines in darkness. And I believe strongly that worship would play a huge role in shining that light, in ushering that last day's harvest, in, in, in propagating the gospel, in publishing the message of revival. Because music is a vehicle. It's a vehicle. You know? it's, it's a means of transportation in the realm of the spirit. And it's been said by very, you know, um, many people, you know, that a sound precedes a move. And I'm going to show you scriptures. A sound always precedes a move. Okay. Even God, God does nothing without speaking. You know, a sound. A word precedes creation. So God said, let there be light. And there was what? Light. Amen. You are a church of your faith. This is a, a faith church, so I can't even stay there. And we see through scriptures clearly where a sound ushers in the move of God. Let's go to Psalm 68, 24 and 25. Help me with the New Living Translation. This is by way of introduction. Psalm 68, 24 and 25. Okay, remember a sound ushers in the move of God. Can we read together? I want to go. Your procession has come into view. Stop. So they're saying this is how God moves. This is how God, you know, moves. Your procession. The procession of God. Amen. Let's go. Oh God, the procession of my God and King as he goes into the sanctuary. Continue. Singers are in front. Musicians behind. Between them are young so you see, the Bible says this is how God comes. When I saw the scripture, he changed the way I take praise worship. So I now understood that whenever I have the opportunity to sing, I am introducing God. So the, the time of praise and worship is not something we do to wait for latecomers to come. It's not something we do to, to even... You know, of course, when we, we worship, you know, we, we change the spiritual climate. But the Bible shows us that what we do when we gather as company of singers and psalmists to minister to him is that we introduce him to the scene. Psalm 22 verse 3, Psalm 22 verse 3, another witness, let's see it. Psalm 22 verse 3, thou art holy, you are holy, enthroned on what? The praises. So, if you, are, if you are a music minister here, you do a very serious business. You see, the late blessed Mas Moro says, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is what? Inevitable. If you don't know what you are doing, you will do anything. You won't carry yourself well. So when... People invite me to a place I understand that I'm invited as one to introduce God into a place. And that understanding changes the way you act, the way you live. Hallelujah. So before a sound comes a move. Amen. You see 2 Kings 3 verse 15. The prophet Elisha was you know, contacted to to give prophetic direction to three kings. And, and just because of Jehoshaphat, he decided to, all right, to minister. But before the prophetic word came, before there was the hand of God upon him, the Bible says, bring me a minstrel. As he played, then the hand of God. You see, a sound went and then the move of God came. Hallelujah. I can give you another witness. Joel 2, 1. 
Joel 2 1. Joel 2 1. Joel 2 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. And it says, Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. What introduces that day of the Lord? The sound of the trumpet. 1 Corinthians 4, 18. He says, if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will go to war? So in other words, the, a sound calls. A sound rallies the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, in, in Matthew 21, you know, um, 1 to 10. Let's read. Let, let's read. It's a, it's a long read. I love to support every idea with scripture that's our training amen and they drew and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives then sent Jesus to disciples saying unto them go into the village over against you and straightway ye shall find what an ass tied and a colt with her loose them and bring them unto me if any man say unto you, you shall say the Lord had need of them. Okay, you know the story. Can we jump, can we jump to verse 9 and 10? Verse 9 and 10. You know, and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying what? Hosanna to the word son of David. You see, they released worship. They released praise. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, I think, can you show me the verse that talks about them lying their, their garments? I think it's eight or something. Go to seven or eight quickly. Multimedia, help me. Okay. And a very great multitude did what? Spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches. Have you noticed that the triumphant entry of Jesus came as they lifted up worship Hosanna in the highest he was accompanied by the sound of worship they also laid their garments what is garment there Isaiah 61 verse 3 says he you know for the spirit of heaviness he gives what a garment of praise so our praise and worship are highways for him to come am I communicating As they cried Hosanna, as they worshipped and praised, then he came. It's also interesting that he's going to come, the Bible says, at the sound of what? The trumpet. The Lord is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Psalm 47 verse 2. So there's something about a sound and the move of God. Hallelujah. Have I been able to establish that point? Hallelujah. I have a few points just to help us prepare. You know, what's the, what, what's the posture of the last day's psalmist? Number one, the last day's psalmist must be consecrated to God. Somebody say, must be consecrated. Please shout it. Consecration is not a concept that we talk about a lot, you know, in our generation, you know, but it's an important part if you're going to be one of God's special forces in the last days. And as I share, you'd understand to be consecrated is to be separate and set apart unto a cause, most times, unto a special purpose, unto a special cause. A special service. And see, you must understand that in our work with God, your calling determines your consecration. Say your calling determines your consecration. So, for instance, there is an average consecration that applies to every Jew. So, most times, they'll tell you Jews are not supposed to marry from other... Um, all right, 
other nations, okay? There is a consecration that comes with being like a Jew, just a Jew. And then when you are called to be a Levite, the consecration steps up. There's another, you know, um, consecration expected of you. Then of the priest, you know, there's a consecration expected from the priest. So as a priest who is first a Jew, there are certain things the Jews can do that you cannot do. And then when you go up the notch, there is the consecration of the Nazarite. In fact, that word Nazarite means, you know, to be consecrated or separated. It's from the word Nazar, N-A-Z-I-R, which means literally to be separate, to be consecrated. In other words, the person enters into a voluntary vow. Number 6, verse 2. Into a voluntary vow. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord. Amen. So, and as part of their consecrations, they are to refrain from certain things. They refrain from wine, from fermented drinks, from grapes, from raisins, not even the seeds or the skin should they eat. They refrain from cutting their hair. They are not to go near carcass, the dead bodies, and you know that may defile them ceremonially. And we know Samson was in Nazareth. Samuel was also in Nazareth. And in the New Testament, John the Baptist was in Nazareth. Now, these men were used in special ways. Special ways. That's why their consecration was unique. It was unique. All right. In the same vein, God has his, his last days Nazarite. So when people come to me to say, Pastor Nat, can I do this? Can I do that? My question is always to them, what has God called you to do? Can I charge? Can't I charge? Can I collaborate with this? Can I do this? I say, well, it depends on your, your calling with God. There are some of us, God has called us in a certain place. And what is good for you may not be good for us. So for some people, that everybody is doing it does not mean I can do it. Are you learning something? It's similar to what Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 21. He says, yeah, just like the um, Nazareth says, in, in a house, but in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of what? Earth. And some to honor and some to dishonor. Please continue. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a, a vessel unto honor, sanctified and what meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So there are many vessels. There is wood, there is silver. So the question is, what vessel are you? Because it determines your use. If you are a common vessel, then you can do everything. So from time to time, I get all of these invitations, come and do this, come and do that, come and do that. And when I say, sorry, I'm not able to do that, then they tell me, eh, but this person is also a music minister, he's doing that. I said, I don't know what they are called to do. I have a special call on my life. And that calling determines my consecration. And in these last days, God is calling some people to be his special forces. Hope you know that music ministers are also the warring arm of heaven. Or you, or you don't know that? Second Chronicles 20, 20, 21. You know, they went out to fight the Ammonites. And the Bible says they appointed singers. That was the work of the soldiers. But singers were the ones that fought the battle. So the question is, what has God called you? Has God called you to be everywhere and do everything? To go up and down? Or are you one of those last days elite troops that he uses? 
He wants to do something in a city and just sends you there to go and release a sound. Some of us, that's how he uses us. He says, okay, go to America, go to this place and sound the trumpet. And by the grace of God, God uses that, uses us in that way. Recently, I was with my friend, William McDowell. You know, in 2020, I'd gone there just before the pandemic to teach in the worship seminar. And then I was going to fly back the next day. And then he said to me, man of God, please. Um, he pastors a, a, a very thriving church. He said to me, I've been praying and I feel led of the spirit to have you stay back and just with the sound of the trumpet, open up the heavens over something we are believing God for. He said, we've been trusting God for an auditorium, but the government has said it's impossible to have it. But I was praying this morning and I feel that if you, that God would release that to, to you. And I had witness in my heart because he bore witness in my heart. And then we, be, um, we began to worship and we began to sound the trumpet because I know the anointing of my life. I know the, some of the things he said about me that I will go to nations and be known as the one that spills heaven upon the earth. And he will use me as his mighty instrument of war. So we began to lead worship, sound the trumpet from Joshua 6 and ask them to shout. You know, some of the things we do that people don't know. You see, when we shout with understanding, we are warring in the spirit. Can I show you some keys? Can I show you? Okay, let me give you this as some jara. So that when, when, when we say shout, shouting is one of the ways that we take over territories and the sound of the trumpet. Let me show you some scripture. Let me show you some scriptures. Hallelujah. One of the ways that we fight. Go to 2 Chronicles 13, 13 to 15. If you have the good news translation, help me. And then I'll go back to the testimony. He says, the Judeans gave a loud shout and led by Abijah. They attacked and defeated Jeroboam and the Israelite army. Continue. The Israelite fled from the Judeans and God led the Judeans over power them. Now, the, the, the shout was accompanied by the sound of trumpet. The same thing that happened in Joshua 6 as they encompassed the city 6 7. Then they blew the trumpet and shouted. And then they said, The Lord has given you the city. So that service, I just, you know, was led in worship. And then we began to minister and prophesy and wage war. And then at some point, I just declared, This is the last time I will be ministering in this house. The next time the trumpet sounds, I'll be ministering in that new auditorium. And we said that, just prophesied with the sound of the trumpet. And three months later, that which the government said was impossible was turned around. And he, he had made a vow to God that when they get the building, you've got to come back and open up the building with the sound of the trumpet. Now, because God uses me in such dimensions, he demands some consecrations from me. So the question is, how is God using you in the last days? Are you okay of, you know, just being a singer, just having one hit song and making some money and being a celebrity? God, God wants to use you more than that. Say, God wants to use you more than that. Hallelujah. We are to consecrate ourselves from things that defile us. We are to consecrate ourselves from the works of the flesh. From all of these things that pollute the oil. 2 Timothy 2, 9 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of God depart from iniquity. 
We have to separate ourselves from things that defile, from pride, from immorality, from, from love for money, from, from, from all of these things that plague. Plague us. Isaiah 52 verse 11. Isaiah 52 verse 11. He said, let them that bear it, the vessel of God, let depart, go ye out from thence. Touch not on clean things. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. We have to consecrate ourselves from the things that defile our spirit, our souls, even our bodies. And not just things that defile, but also consecrate ourselves from some legitimate things. So we say legitimate things. You see, every time I share some of these consecrations, I have been so attacked, not by unbelievers, my fellow music ministers. In fact, somebody has said to me, if you, if you don't want to do this thing, shut up, you are spoiling our market. I say, sorry, I didn't know you were selling market. <laughs> Hallelujah. They say, if you don't want money, shut up. But like I share this, I, I don't make them as a blanket rule. You know, because I, I share, Paul said, Paul said, I have a right to make demands. I have a right. Because the word says you don't muzzle the ox that threads the cord. It's in the Bible. So in other words, you have responsibility to take care of me. I, I can decide to make a demand. But Paul says, I have not used that right. That's one of my consecration. Is somebody being blessed? So it's not a question of, um, can I do this? Can't I do this? Can I do that? It's what has God called you to do? If he has called you to be like a Navy SEAL for special operations, why do you want to be like a traffic warder? And compare yourself. Because the, the traffic warder who is he's also in the military, is also in, is, you know, you know, someone who's trained, you know. But the demands of his job is not as much as that one who goes. See, a Navy SEAL will be under the water for minutes. They will drop him in the, in, in, in the forest to find his way out without food and water to build his stamina. So if I'm a Navy SEAL, I can't compare myself with the other person. That's why the Bible says those who compare themselves with themselves are not wise. What's the basis? What we are called to do is different. So my question to you this morning, what has God called you to do in these last days? Has he called you as a special agent to be deployed in these last days to usher in the king to go into nations and change the spiritual climate. To release sounds that would, you know, perpetuate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the spirit and the bride say come. And one of the ways the bride say come is through that worship. I was in Israel in, in a few years back. And, you know, we go there for a time of prayer and just retreat. And in the morning, I was worshiping. You know, we just go there. We soak in the morning, worship for hours. In the evening, we just, you know, worship God. And then we wait on him. And then as we minister to him, the prophetic word comes. It was in Israel. While I was worshiping, the, a, a man of God said to me, when you go back, there's a mighty move of God. God's going to use you for. And that's how the Hallelujah Challenge came about. So one of those trips, I was ministering unto the Lord, praying in tongues, and then it felt like a, a jar of water was poured upon my head. And the next thing I heard, the king is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will see the king. That's like a, a garment that we lay. Every eye will see the king. The king is coming. In glory and in majesty, every eye will see. So, for some people, that's how God uses them to fulfill His end time agenda. 
And to operate in that realm, he demands some consecration. He says, for you, you have to pray more. For you, I'll demand, you can't do this. It's not wrong, but you cannot do this. There are some very, very personal consecrations I go into, but I can't share. It's not, it's not, it's a very personal thing. He says, for you, your mouth is to declare my counsel. So you can't use it anyhow. I'll stop there. Yes. Amen. Someone say consecration. So what has God called you to be and to do in these last days? Others can, but you can't. And they don't have to be bad things. So from time to time, I get invitations to do birthday parties and all. But it's not something I will readily do. It's not the core of my ministry. I, I, when people invite me for that, I reserve them. I tell them, well, it has to be praise and worship. I reserve for my friends and family. But it cannot be the core of my ministry. I can't travel everywhere doing birthday parties because it will distract me from the main thing. Yes, I will, I will have more money. They will give me more money, even if I don't ask, because it is expected of you when somebody comes to minister to you in their spiritual gift. Paul says, is it wrong that you minister to me in your carnal gift? Amen. There is a balance to it. So if somebody says, I am led by the Spirit for pastors here, you see, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, it's my conviction, it's my consecration to not discuss charges. And, and why do I do that? How much can I place on my gift? So, I will come and because I understand that my ministry is twofold, primarily to minister unto the Lord. That's, that's the first calling of every ministry minister. Say to minister unto the Lord. And then his people. And this is the way it works. As you minister to him, he then sings through you over his people. He rejoices over them with singing. So my understanding has always been, okay, if a church invites me to come minister, they are doing two things. First, come and minister to God and to his people. My own understanding, and let me say this before I trend on Twitter, because people will take it and tell Pastor Nadi say, no. My understanding is, when you say to me, come and minister to God, I can't charge God to minister to him. How much did he charge me for his blood on Calvary? The blood that is the very reason for my ministry. So, it's, it's a personal consecration and it has worked for me. So, why leave what is working? See, if I share some of my testimonies, people will be jealous. Oh, I, I don't even want to go there. Strange things. I am a living testimony by God's grace of what it means to be on God's payroll. Mm. Okay, let me help give you one. Three weeks ago, I felt led in my heart. I wanted to bless some people. I don't charge a dime, but I gave out two cars in one day. I bought it. Mm. I said, I said, my to my keyboard player, I bought, I said, my PA, hold one. I said, yes. I'm trusting God very soon that I'll start giving out houses. Yes. See, God has to use some people to show that he's a good God. Yes. Now, I'm sharing this because I'm in a good house. It's not info I would like to share publicly. So my question is, what has God called you? It's not about this person is doing this, that person is doing that, you know, and this is right or wrong. It is what has he called you to do? That determines your consecration. Are you just a Jew or are you a Nazarite like Samson? And if you look at what Samson did, he operated in an unparalleled level of power, um, of course, until he missed it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go to the next point. In these last days, the last day psalmist must be a person of the presence. A person. The, the presence of God must be your habitat. Psalm 27 verse 4. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing have I desired. Your desire must be one thing. Your desire must not be fame. Your desire must not be to hammer. Your, your, your desire must not be to shine. Your desire must be for his presence. Everything we do must be geared towards that. You must be a person of the presence, a person of the secret place. For it's in that space that he unveils himself, that the downloads happen. One thing I desire of the Lord is that I will dwell in his temple to behold the beauty of his presence that I may seek his face and pray give him pleasure all the days of my life praising his name waiting just waiting to see your face daily I am waiting just waiting to see your face daily in your presence waiting on the Lord See, we, no matter how God leaves you, don't forsake the secret place. For it is the unfortunate story of life that when he leaves us, we stop doing the things. We stop being in the place where he met us to lift us. How do you stay humble? How do you stay meek? It's in his presence. How do we deal with pride? It's in his presence. Do you know what pride is? Pride is seeing yourself. What is pride? Pride is being full of yourself. That's what pride is. But you see, the more we stay in his presence, the more we see him. And when you see him, you then see yourself as you really are. You see your weakness. You see your need for him. Like the prophet, when I saw the Lord, when King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord. And what happened after that? He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. No flesh glories in his presence. His presence breaks you down. His presence deals with the works of the flesh. We empty ourselves. We empty self in his presence. And when we empty self, we make room for him to fill us. Pride says, I'm too full of self. There's no room for God. Humility says, Lord, here I am. Poor grace. Poor grace. For he gives what? Grace to the humble. Be a man of his presence. Be a man that loves God more than you love ministry. When I meet music ministers, I mean, I've, I've, I've got a tribe, you know, of friends. The first thing we begin to talk about is what God's, what's God saying? What's he doing in your life? Before we begin to talk about what's the next album you are recording, In John 4, Jesus said, 
You worship who you know not. We know who we worship. Make knowing him your pursuit in life. Make, let ministry be an offshoot, an overflow of relationship. Let the songs, you know, I don't have songwriting time. Oh, let me sit down and write a song. All I do is, as long as I have fellowship with him, I'm seeing him. I'm spending time with him. He's revealing himself to me. He's giving me revelations. I then, as he inspires me, sing that revelation. You see, I can tell a song that is just words. Just trying to piece words together. Okay, you are Lord, you are holy, hallelujah, amen. You can tell it. Because the letter kills is the spirit that gives life. See, when a man sings from revelation, if you sing, if I sing from your head, it will hit your head. If I sing from my heart, it connects with your heart. See, for, because deep calls onto the deep. If I'm in prayer, if, if I had an inspiration, the Bible says there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. If I'm in prayer, because there are some atmospheres I go to, atmospheres of prayer, as I begin to intercede in prayer and the spirit of grace and supplication comes upon me, I get inspired to sing a song. If I get a song in prayer, when people sing it, it will provoke prayer in them. So people meet me, Pastor Nad, every time I'm singing this song, I just find myself praying in tongues non-stop. That's because I fetched it from the water of prayer. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? Are you being blessed? The last day's psalmist is a lover of God. He's a gazer. He's one who beholds. David said in Psalm 8, he says, when I consider the heavens and the work of your fingers, what is man that you are mindful of him? The moon and stars. So David was a gazer. To consider is to think, is to gaze, is to behold. You are constantly, you are not gazing on all of these things we chase after. You know, awards. I mean, you, you won't catch me telling you to vote for me for one award. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's okay for people, a body of people to recognize you to recognize your body of work and to celebrate the grace of God on your life. No, but I won't go around canvassing, vote for me, vote for me. What's that? I'm now beholding awards. I want to behold Jesus. When the accolades come, you receive them, thank you, but you move ahead. That's how you stay focused though. See, to lift you is not a problem for God. Staying lifted is the problem. Just staying there, setting your eyes as a flint. We do that by beholding him. Because as we behold him, he gives us perspective. Oh, yes. There are certain times I get so busy and you are getting to activities and then you get into his presence and the light of his word shines on you and God tells you you've just been busy doing stuff for yourself. And then you begin to realign and then it breaks you down. Because it's about him. It's about his glory. I always share that ministry is no industry there may be one or two principles that apply no 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 this is a calling it's not a career yes, sir. Yes, sir. and he who calls calls the shot no 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 it's serious business to keep your lovely face ever before my eyes 
This is my prayer. Make it my strong desire that in my secret heart no other love survives, no rival throne survives, and I serve only you. It's so, it's so easy to lose focus we you know all the accolades come oh you know you know nathaniel bassi even even the even the encouragement even the applause if you don't learn to behold him you will miss it so people say to me brother nathaniel have you have you managed to just you know with all of that's going on in your life by the grace of god just keep it simple i'm like if i leave that place if I leave that place of beholding, I will miss it. Because that's where I get perspective. That's where I get orders from. That's where I, I get alignment. That's where I measure what I'm doing. Because it's not, it's not those that men approve that are approved. Though. It's not though. It's, <laughs> it's dangerous. The applause of men is danger. The same Jesus that was on the donkey, they said, this is Baker's king. He knew, he knew man. He knew what was a man. We must learn to be a people of the presence. A people of relationship with God. Intimacy. And in that place, the revelation flows and the ministry becomes a function of revelation we begin to sing our rhema of god i tell people that when people say come and minister what they are saying is come and describe god to us in songs that's what they are saying come and come and describe your your secret place your encounter with god but in song form that's what they are saying to you so if i stand here and i have nothing then i'm a fraud I'm telling them about a God that I don't know. I'm telling them to use a product. You know, when you travel, you find these people saying, use this product. They cure diabetes. They cure this one. Cure. But they've not used it. So Jesus says, you worship who you know not. We know who we worship. Are you being blessed? Number three, be a person of the word. God and his word are one. To know God is to know his word. To know his word is to know God. Psalm 119 verse 54. Psalm 119 verse 54. Are you being blessed? Psalm 119 verse 54. It says, thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. Music ministers, the word of God is what we sing. Jesus says we worship in spirit and in truth. John 17, 17, sanctify them by their truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus is the word. So, if you are not dwelling in the word as a music minister, what are you singing? Colossians 3.16, Colossians 3.16, Colossians 3.16, Colossians 3.16. It says, let the word of Christ, you see, look at the progression. Let the word of Christ do what? Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. And then what will happen? So, singing in Psalms and spiritual songs and hymns, is preceded by what? Let the word dwell in you richly. Can you see the progression? And you see, your attitude of the, with the word is this. You don't now read the word because you are looking for songs. Do you understand? Because you can follow the back door. You read the scripture and then they put a, put a tune on that. 
the letter kills is the spirit that gives life. But when you read the word, you read the word to know God. It's to know God. It's I want to know you. Then at some point, the spirit, Ruach Elohim, can breathe upon it and shine a light and say, this is Rema that should go out as sound. Yeah. That's why you take some of this album and when you finish playing it, you're like, hey, my 1,000. Oh. <laughs> because they put every beat. Everything was there. They put every stuff. You know, the voice is sounding nice, but there is no life. There is no breath. There is no ruach. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Say richly. So a day does not go past without looking in this word. Oh, I invest in all sorts of Bibles. Deco, Strongo, Concordance. I have them all sorts. You know, because also, you see, the Bible says there are three that bear witness. The word. The spirit, the word, and what? The spirit, the water, and the, and the blood. So, even when you have an inspiration by the spirit, right? Don't be quick to release it as a song. Check it within the confines of the word because it must bear witness. Amen. We are to sing with truth, with understanding. Do you understand? So the word of God in these last days must dwell in us richly. Not because you want to write a song, but because you want to know him. The song is only an overflow, an outflow, an outflow. Say overflow. Say overflow. Say overflow. I'll leave that there. You must be a person of the spirit. A person of the spirit. You know, by person of the spirit, of course, be a man of prayer, being a person, you know, who is given to prayer. But beyond that, you must be a, a man who walks in the spirit. And what do I mean by walking in the spirit? Essentially, I'm talking about someone who walks in love. You are spiritual only to the extent that you walk in love. Your, our love walk is the gauge of our spirituality. Remember, when Paul says, he says, if I speak with tongues of angels, right? If I can pray in tongues for 10 hours, have deep mysteries, revelations, give myself to be born without love, I'm what? Nothing. Hallelujah. And by love, I mean, you know, you know one who bears that fruit of love, all of the attributes and characteristics of love, patience, meekness, gentleness. This gift must be anchored on godly character. Your song and your person must be one. They must not be inseparable. You are not a worshiper because you sing. You are just you are a worshiper that sings. So when you understand that, you know, it helps because you don't just become spiritual on stage and deep. Then off the stage, you live anyhow. Galatians 5.16 Galatians 5.25 Galatians 5.2 You see, when you are a person of love you know, one of the things you, you, we find a lot amongst music ministers and musicians is a lot of competition just, you know everybody trying to outdo this person meanwhile in the last days we are supposed to come together as, you know, as a troop 
you are discrediting this person, you are finding fault with this person, you are doing that criticizing. He says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. One of the things that love does, love prefers the other. Love does not vaunt itself. Love does not seek to promote itself. Hallelujah. The last day psalmist must be one that walks in love. And the Bible says that the love of God is shared and brought in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You must be a people who allow, you know, yesterday, if you, you are not around, you may just get the tape or so, or watch online. You know, we must be a people who are led by the Spirit. We must allow, you know, the ministry of the Holy Spirit within. You know, there, there's, there's a dimension of his ministry within. Jesus says when he comes, he will be in us and with us. The within dimension is the one that sanctifies us. Is the one that that works out the person of Christ through us and how does it happen as we yield to him as we surrender to him as we like we learned yesterday acquaint ourselves as we answer him as we you know you know follow his leading we we are constantly consistently being conformed into the image of God I don't just want to be this very anointed man that knows how to change the climate and off the stage, my fragrance repels people. He says he's, he's very anointed, but you can't stand him. He's such a nasty guy. So no. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? To the next point, the last day psalmist must understand prophetic music ministry and I want to spend some time here prophetic music ministry I'm not talking about being a prophet now First Chronicles 25 verse 1 and verse 7 we must be trained to operate more as prophetic psalmist and I'll explain what it means in these last days Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph, of Haman, and of Jeduthun, who should do what? Prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with harps. Go to verse 7. Okay, verse 7. So the number of them with their brethren that were what? Instructed in the songs of of the Lord. There is a dimension called the songs of the Lord. You know, there is a dimension of, you know, prophetic music ministry. And what is it? In these last days, we must grow in that dimension. That word prophecy there is the word naba. It means to speak or sing by inspiration. Say to speak, to sing by inspiration. The last day psalm is should understand the oppression of the songs of the Lord and of the song of deliverance. Let me explain them very quickly. You know, and, and if there are pastors here, before that dimension can grow, we must be ready to allow freedom and liberty of worship. Now, how many of you have come here during the past summit conferences to see Brother Keith minister? Have you noticed that at some point as he's ministering, as he's sharing, towards the end, a prophetic song comes. He just begins to sing. Zephaniah 3.17 says that God rejoices over us with singing. Many of those times, when those songs come, God is singing over us. God is bringing prophetic direction. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 22, verse 3, Thou art holy, thou who inhabits the praises. The word praises in that verse is the word tehila. Say tehila. Tehila is that unrehearsed, spontaneous praise that comes 
Many times it can come as a song of the Lord. In other words, the song that God wants to hear. A new song. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Or sometimes it can come as a song of deliverance. Psalm 32 verse 7, Thou art my hiding place, thou surround me with song of deliverance. A song of deliverance is what it is. It comes to effect deliverance. How many of you have woken up in the morning, you slept or you were praying, and you know a song that you didn't plan for? You, didn't, you, you probably never sung before. You know that this song is not my mind. You just began to sing them. Many times God sends you, sometimes a message is as the song of the Lord. God is probably saying to you, I want to hear this song. Sing it back to me. Or this song is an instrument of deliverance for you in a situation. And a song of deliverance has to be proclaimed for your life can depend on it. I'll give you a few examples. I was flying from Charlotte to to, to, to dollars in America. Now, if you go to America, you realize that they have lots of airports. So I just booked, you know, I mean, I was from Nigeria, so I just thought it was one airport. I booked an airport. By the time I saw it, it was very far from where I lived. So we got on this plane. And as my routine is, when I, when I get on a plane, I go around with my headphone. You see that with my um, PA whole seat. I, I just go around with music because I... I'm stirred up with music. So I put my earphones and just singing and praying the spirit. As I was in the plane, unplanned of a song rose in my spirit. And it was um, Thai Tribes, He Turned It. He turned my sorrow into dancing. Now, if you're a spiritual person, you ask the question, hey, Lord, this song that is coming to me now in a plane, what are you trying to turn? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you understand? So I picked up and it was a message from God. You see, some of you are praying. God will answer you with a song. You don't know he has answered you. Meanwhile, the message is embedded in that song. If I have time, maybe next time I'll come to teach on the oppression of the song of deliverance. How to use a song and fight and war. I'll go back to that testimony. In, in, in about, I think, 2018 or so, God, your name is a strong tower. We went to Israel, and the Lord prevailed upon us to sing it for four hours, one song. Not knowing that I was effecting deliverance for my wife. After that meeting, she had what they call ectopic pregnancy. And we know, the doctors, when... The way the circumstances played out, the way God moved the hand of the doctor to come, there was a doctor who was not supposed to. Every doctor tried to check what was wrong. They didn't see. Then we went to this office, this hospital. We were led to go there. And a doctor who was not supposed to come to work, when he came, he said, something said to me to just come to work. <laughs> now, he said something. Something said to me. And then he came. And he came put the laser on my wife and the things other doctors could not see he saw it and if he hadn't seen it my wife would have gone but a few days to the time when Israel ministering and we began to sing for the first time your name is a strong tower Jesus to you belong all power Jesus whenever I call whenever I call your name you make a way your name is a strong tower jesus go to f let's raise the key go, go to b flat your name is a strong tower jesus to you belong all power jesus whenever i call whenever i call your name hey you make Away. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. We sang it for four hours in Israel. Four hours. Ask people who went, who went with me to Israel that time. Which of you came to Israel that time? 
Number of you here. Four hours. The Lord will let us go. See, when you wake up with a song, or you are praying, and you encounter a song, you better sing it. Your life might depend on it. A song of deliverance has to be declared. It is in declaring it that we effect deliverance. Another characteristic of a song of the Lord, it must bear the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I laugh when people say they are writing gospel song and they don't want to mention Jesus. I say, so what does he have? That he has no salvation. For there is no salvation in any other name. You see, the devil, the devil gives us some ideas from here. No, just sing it. You don't want, you want people to accept it. Okay, it's a good song, but it's a powerless song. This is serious business. Go to Isaiah 30, verse 29. God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. A song is a road, though, in the realm of the spirit. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart. As when God out with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. And what will happen? And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lighting down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of devouring fire with the scattering of tempest and hailstone. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down with smoke with a rock. But how did the voice of the Lord come? He had a song. He had a song. He had a song. These are the weapons of our warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I can show you in scriptures, Second Chronicles 20, as they began to declare, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Then he set ambushment. That's why I tell people, when you declare that God is good and his mercy endures forever, it's an instrument of warfare. So we sang that song for four hours. And I'm telling you, I say this before the Lord God of heaven that I serve. The doctor that came was actually a redeemed pastor. That's not his hospital. We took my wife. First and foremost, I traveled to. Can I share some things with you? I was in the UK. I was going to fly back. And I prayed that morning. Remember, we had declared the song of the Lord in Israel. Then I flew to UK to minister. And I was on my way. And I, and I did a FaceTime interview with my wife. You know. And then just saying, babe, I'm coming, I'm on my way. And then I went to the airport. As I went to the airport, keep playing. As I went to the airport, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and I not to travel that day. Now, it was going to cost me almost $2,000, but I knew I had God. So I said, I'm not traveling again today. I, I rented a, a hotel near Heathrow. Near Heathrow. And I just stayed there. Now, I just obeyed. I didn't know why I shouldn't travel. I didn't feel it was a plane crash or whatever. I just felt, don't travel today. I told my wife, I'm not traveling. Few hours later, my wife calls me on FaceTime. She had collapsed and just with her last strength, baby, I need help. Nobody, nobody. I can't. I saw my wife going. I said, babe. Now, what did God do? Because my wife called me and she got me on the phone, I was able to call for help. And they went home to take her. If I was on that flight, she wouldn't have reached me. This, this person we call the Holy Ghost, don't joke with him. When they say be a person of the Spirit, it's not, it's not a, it's, it's, that's your life. So I called for help. Her sister had gone out. They went home, took my wife to the hospital. Anyway, we, were, we had effected the song of deliverance. and So we saw the hand of God. We were seeing the hand of, the God, and, and of God and then were led to move her from the hospital because my wife was pale. She was losing life. They didn't see what was happening. Then we felt led again to go to one particular hospital. A pastor friend of mine called. 
you know, who I'm, who, I mean, I ministered with her and it was through her ministry that, you know, I met my wife. So she just called me, said, Nathaniel, I feel strongly in my spirit to move Sarah to this hospital in Lekki. We went there. She was already pale. We don't know what happened. Then that doctor, a redeemed parish, a redeemed pastor, who was supposed to be in Ikbaja, I said, something constrained me to come to the hospital. By the time he came and tested my wife, he said, ah, this is ectopic now, can't you see it? And then he turned to me and said, tell me about yourself. He said, because I was not supposed to be here. I said, my name is Pastor Nathan. He said, Say, no wonder. No wonder. I, I was not supposed to be here. That's how God saved my wife's life. Through effect, through the oppression of the song of deliverance that moved the hand of God. Back to my American story. I was in that flight and I heard the song. He turned it and I learned the oppression of the song of deliverance. That when you hear a song of deliverance, you have to declare it. It's in declaring it that you effect the deliverance. So in the plane, I'm like, he turned it just quietly, just singing it, just singing it. And all of a sudden, the pilot just said to us, ladies and gentlemen, something just appeared on the screen. We don't know what it is, but we must find a way to land immediately as time may be running out. As he gave that announcement, it became James Bond time. <laughs> just trying to find time. Remember I had booked a wrong airport eh? and God came, the word of God came to me through a song. He turned it. He moved, he moved, he moved. And I said, when I heard it, I knew that God had already gone ahead. So I, I began to give thanks. Just singing your alpha and omega and just singing. And I saw you both, uh, you both were more quiet, you know. If you were our people, I know that. <laughs> Would have prayed that plane down and slandered it. So they didn't talk. But I didn't know they were watching me. So the guy moved and they were looking for, for a nearest airport. The word I got was, he turned it. If you listen to Ty Tribe's song, it is, he turned, he turned it for good, right? What was meant for evil. So by the time we landed, fire trucks in the U.S. just by God's grace we landed. Fire trucks came, you know, surrounded us. And then we disembarked the plane. Then they now checked. They came into the plane. The engineers came. I saw that they went out and they were upset. He said this was just something now that she should have clicked now. There was nothing wrong, you know. It was just a small fault that they just wasted our time. But what did happen? When we came back, they announced that they, had, they landed me in the airport I should have landed. He said he turned it for good. Listen to me. So... So while I was standing, I was standing with some, some Oyibo, some white. So they came to me and actually said, thank you for helping us land the plane. I'm like, why? He said, your singing encouraged us. When they announced boarding, we, that, you know, we had to board. And thank God I didn't check in any luggage. It was just hand luggage. So I said to them, okay, and, and they said to me, okay, let's, let's go back in the plane. And they were trying to talk to me, you know, are you a musician? Are you a pastor? So I said to them, oh, I don't need to board the plane. This is the airport I was supposed to land. The man said, don't tell me you got the plane here just to land. I said, my God, his son was on this plane. He turned everything around for my good. That is the God we serve. He, what was meant for evil, he turned for good. Oh, Yibo man said, he, the person knew. He said, you made this plane come here. I said, yes. I said I booked the wrong airport before. Somebody say a song of deliverance. What is my point? Why am I saying here? Praise him when you come here. You may have planned to have a very nice song. Three good songs. But somebody in the Holy Ghost that the Holy Spirit is moving on. And the, and the Lord just says change gear. You better learn to change. You better learn to adjust. Because that song can be a song of escape for someone. It can be a song that God wants to hear. But you see, if we don't have a church structure that accommodates this, we will lose out on a lot of things. Sometimes you plan for three songs. God will say, just stay on that one. And then the prophetic song begins to come when a service 
because I pastor a church and also, I'm also a, a Sami, so I allow that atmosphere in our church. The Ruach Elohim you heard is from our meeting. Because as you worship, as you go to a climax, that is the zone where a new song comes. Hallelujah, A came like that. Hallelujah, when a service just worshiping, and then he roared. He came as Tehila and it's spontaneous, unrehearsed songs. And when they come like that, God uses them as an instrument for deliverance, to speak to people, to minister to His people. That's why when you you read my bio, I said music is an instrument to minister to God, and also an avenue where He ministers to his people. There are times when he also sings over you with rejoicing. Those are prophetic ministry. And we have to in these last days learn to teach our warriors to war like that. We're singing like that February this year. Hallelujah challenge. I think day 18 when we just kept going. The mighty God just invaded. When we began to sing you are mighty. We, we got into a realm and I knew he came in. And it was in that service that I heard the word. I said, who is Olu or something? There's an Olu or something. The Midianites are gathered up against you. And God has, is saying that the, as we praise and pray now, he has gone ahead of you. I didn't know that there was one Olu of worry. He's on, he's on record. So we word. And they sent me an email. They said, man of God, that person you described, is this person and indeed Midianites I described the Midianites were gathered and through that praise we effected victory praise is dangerous so. when we minister to God how about dancing oh dancing one, maybe I will speak with pastor one day we will come and engage these tools God gives us do you know what it means to dance prophetically before God When you dance in the spirit, you literally turn things around. Jeremiah 31, 13. Jeremiah 31, 13. Jeremiah 31, 13. Oh, there's a way we fight in this kingdom. Oh. I've, and I've seen God fight too. Oh yes, oh yes. Believe me. Then shall the virgin rejoice in what they dance. Both young men and old together. For what will happen? So you go to the office and some people decide to gather against you. No problem. Wake up at 12 midnight. Look for a Holy Ghost filled song. Lock your room. Just begin to dance. Just begin to dance. That's all I come up here. Come up here. Let's 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 walk this a bit. When they come against you, you are good, you are kind, you are more than these. Words trying to describe Elohim, Elion, Halishele, we your greatness is all I see. There is nothing you cannot do, there's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. Why? You have a track record of keeping your word. Hey! And you're not about to stop to it. Hey! Oh Lord, I you. Hey! Oh Lord, I you. Oh Lord, who are by you? You are my Hey, Shepi wall of fortune. Shepi in left fortune. Hey, Shepi wall of fortune. Oh Lord, who are by you? You dance before him.
who are down, great mountain, standing before the roof of them. My God, my God, this is how we fight. Hey, Carlo Daba. Hey, Lava. There are some sensitive things I can't share on the internet. I've seen God fight for people, for God's people. When, when I saw him fighting, you begin to pity the enemies. Yeah. Yes. I know what I'm saying. We had this revelation on the dance in church. One of our girls came. The father works in government. And then we're praying, praying, praying. They set, they set him up. They said he stole some money. They set him up. They want to get him, you know, get him out. And then this revelation came on the dance. Sunday, she danced before God. She danced in the spirit. In 24 hours, everybody that conspired. Why do we need this dimension in these last days? We are going to contend crazy forces in these last days. No, it's not... The, the days will be gloomy but the body of Christ must learn to deploy see I tell let me speak to music ministers this morning I don't call my musicians instrumentalists it may be a definition but their identity is they are ministers I tell them when you, you sit on that thing you are a warrior oh no 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 I know you are not you are not just a singer you are God's special forces of the last days when 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 they tell you to lead that's why you don't just come in beggar you pray up you say Lord what is the sound what's the river how am I flowing Holy Spirit help me help me I need to I need to release the right sound because there's somebody whose life depends on this service I hope I've been able to maybe stir up a hunger in you that you are more than just a singer you are God's end time special forces when I see when I hold this trumpet the reason why I don't play this trumpet anywhere no matter how much you pay me no 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 this trumpet is for the kingdom it's to herald the king of kings People think I don't like money. You see, I think I don't like money. I want money. There are things I want to do for God. But because this thing is used for serious business, it's used first to minister to him and to war in the spirit. So I carry myself seriously. Can you lift your hands? And if you're a pastor here, I pray that we encourage and we train our people to be prophetic psalmist. You know, don't, don't, don't be religious when it comes to leading. It can change. My people know they, they are trained to switch. We may practice a song, oh, this is what we are doing, oh, but I'll get there at the river has changed. I say, guys, we are flowing. We switch. Um, 
One moment in the move of God is, 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 is more important than one very nice presentation. No. One moment in the glory, just one. Let the people praise thee, O Lord. Let the people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield and increase. I was, I was hearing a testimony of a lady. I won't call them. You know, 2017, we were having the hallelujah challenge. She said she joined. Her husband was, was working in a financial, you know, institution. And she just worshipped God on their behalf. You know, she would just, because when we praise him, we open the heavens, the earth. Yield increase. And four years down the line, these people are talking about owning a billion dollar company. A billion dollar. So when I see that God is using me for those things, no, 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 I have to, I consecrate myself. These are the kinds of people God wants to raise in this end time. Have you been blessed? Can we just minister to him a bit more? Can you pray in the Holy Spirit if you pay Rabba Shah? Hey Rabba Kantele Balua. I'm hearing a song. Can somebody come and sing it for me? SM, 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 Adindu. Who can sing it for me? Sing. SM. your life I want to release you know grace upon your heart just that staying power God has given me a grace staying power just that ability to set my eyes as a flint even if it means standing alone see this man he has been ridiculed a journalist said to me you are wasting away in a local church you have refused to inspire your generation some people said to me that you will eat sand Shabby, you want to play in church but God gave me staying power. Staying power. He strengthened me with might by His Spirit. Hey, He's given me a, a, a thick skin and a tender heart by grace. So if you are one of those, I want to pray over you. I want you to run. I want you to come. Hey, to impact. Oh, hold on. Set my heart on fire for you. I want to burn for you, oh Lord, oh, oh. Hey. Where are God's special forces? 
for the last days. Oh, oh Lord. ready to consecrate yourself away from the things that defiled these are not the season for playing games with your purity your sexual purity your heart no 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 you can't play those games see one of the things I know the day I began I begin to mess around with women I'm gone no way so I operate a very strict policy by the grace of God. You can't come and see me in my hotel room, my sister. Mm -mm. Not because you know, I don't think I have character. No, 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 no. no. Because what I have is precious. I can't, I can't, I can't take a chance. I consecrate myself. Yes, I need money, and I don't, I don't dare say that. You know, there's a balance to that. You know, I always teach the church. Honor music ministers. Don't say because somebody has said, I'm not requesting you, just treat them. In fact, one of the ways that you can replicate the grace that you're inviting is honor. You like something in a minister, you sow into them. Some people have called me and said, Pastor Nat, we're in a meeting. We want to invite you. I'm like, okay. And we hear you don't charge. I say, yes. Yeah. Ah, thank God. That's because they're saying, you know, They've placed value that we don't have to spend money. Amen. But you've got to consecrate yourself that nothing, Mormon will not. One of the reasons why I say, God, please bless me. I don't want honorarium to, to determine where I go to. Because that struggle is there. I, I'm being sincere. Sometimes we're inviting you, are like, you are looking at the stature of the ministry. You are envisaging the envelope. And if you consider the envelope too much, you won't develop. If you are just con Because there are some places you won't go to. But we've got to be led. Are you ready for the last days? We are talking about revival. It's serious business. Let you see. Let, let me tell you about my team. I was going to sing this song. I didn't tell them to play it, but they played the song I wanted to sing. Because we've trained them. So when when I have musicians, I say no, no, no. When I'm ministering, I, I don't care what you practice. Don't play me. Don't try to show yourself. It must complement the music. Everybody here is a warrior. You are an instrumentalist here. You are not an instrumentalist carrying guitar up and down, looking when the world is going on. You go and sit outside with the boys. You don't have understanding. That guitar in your hand, David played it and demons disappeared. Carry yourself. Let your fire fall, let the river flow, let it burn inside and flow outside. Let the fire fall, let your river flow, let it burn inside and then flow outside. See, let the fire fall. Inside and flow outside. Let your fire fall. Let the river flow. Let it burn inside and flow outside. Can I explain that song? He walks first in you. You see, He walks first in us. Let it burn inside 
when he has works in you then the river then flows outside he's more interested in working in you in clearing the highway those things that that hinder the move of God he wants to burn it the shaft the, the pride the, 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 the lust the, the everything that does not glorify the fire wants to take care so I want you to cry out say fire burn burn inside and so there's space for the river to flow outside let the fire fall let the fire fall hey let the river fall let it burn inside I'm going to call the fire to come now. Let the fire go. Let the river go. Let it go inside. Let it go outside. I'm going to sound my trumpet and call the fire of God to come upon you. When you hear the trumpet blaring, calling you, I want you to shout fire. Amen. He's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and with fire. One of the assignment of fire is to burn and purify. Then empower. Then commission you. As the last days warrior. Not just a messenger. But as an ambassador. When you hear the trumpet, I want you to call the fire of the spirit. And let it just spread in this place. you have helped me I'm not perfect I'm not there yet but I've seen your help and grace on my life Paul said I long to come to you that I might impact upon you spiritual gift that ye may be established that which you've given me graciously I impact on every willing vessel staying power staying power Stay power, passion for your presence, design for you, the ability to focus in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, take it, take it. I release now, now, grace, the psalmist anointing, the scribe's anointing. I impact it in measure. Let it multiply in this place from person to person. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon you let it burn let it burn let it realign let it change your focus let it renew your mind in the name of Jesus there shall come a sound you will be custodians of the sound of the last days in the name of Jesus we release mantles prophetic mantles apostolic mantles teaching mantles the psalmist mantles now now, 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 yeah, now, now, out of your innermost being flow rivers of living waters, sounds from heaven, sounds from heaven, begin to hear them, your eyes are open, your ears are open, I see prophetic mantles falling on people, seeing eyes, hearing ears, hey color, come on, pray in tongues, loud, now, clap your hands, stamp your feet, pray in the spirit. Rebala, Ashaila, Akuria, Alebarat, Palite, Aima, Fire, Alaba Katele Baras, Elabar, Elabante, Akuria, Baras. I see new wings in the spirit new wings to soar 
to fly, to mount up with wings as eagles. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hey, hey, renewal is going on, revival is going on. For those who missed it, there's restoration. You missed it, you went astray. Grace is available. I see God redeeming time, restoring time. The years that the locusts are stolen, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, the great army, God is restoring. My God is opening you up to visions and dreams of God. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy minstrels prophesy musicians prophesy come on play play shango play prophesy thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord this is the generation that will seek your face this is the generation I will seek him. Oh Jacob, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be he lifted up, the everlasting doors. Let the spirit of grace and supplication fill this house. I release grace for the journey. What do I mean by staying power? As a young man, you know, I know I am one man that God has helped. How, how will this young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the word of God? How would I be able to resist offers at my age? I mean, people will bring all that and then I'll rather I mean, there were times that I suffered. What was keeping me staying power? I was ridiculed. I mean, there was a time I sold my only trumpet for 8,000 naira. 8,000 to one of my students who is now a music minister. Jumbo and Nebet, you can confirm from him. Because I didn't have transport money to go to church. I sold it for 8,000 naira. He said, Brother Nat, why are you selling your trumpet? I said, um, the church has other trumpet. But I didn't tell him I had no money. He was in the midst of a lot of offers. I don't know what was keeping me. It must have been the Holy Ghost. I pray that grace upon you. And today I can afford any trumpet I want to buy. My latest trumpet, it, was, it cost me about $4,000. And I went to William so as I was blowing it. William said, no, 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 no. This trumpet has opened this church. We want to pay for it. They won't even allow me to pay for it. Because they were seeds sown. The problem with our generation is people want the harvest without sowing anything. I pray for staying power for you. Not just for music minister. Any minister of the gospel. I command restoration. That which God ordained you to be, that you've walked away from, but that you have caught again this morning, I pray for a grace for fast track, for realignment. I see greater days ahead of you. I see glory days ahead of you. Ah, those gift things that you lost. Some of you here were prophets, were you used to see things, visions, and then you just got casual with light. Seeing eyes and hearing ears belong to him. Begin to receive them now. For we need to deploy these giftings for the last days. The battle of the last days is not going to be fought with grammar. Creation is not waiting for the explanations, explanations and ideas of the sons of God. It's waiting for demonstrations.
Father, I thank you for what you will begin to do in this conference. If this is just day two, we can only imagine what you're about to do. Father, we release these eagles to go and soar. I stand as one whom you have elected by grace into this office. And I speak over them. Go and soar. Release sounds of heaven. May God reveal your own template to you. I have never imposed my template on every, anyone here. You know that. I have just said your calling determines your consecration. May you come into knowledge of what God has called you to do. And the required consecration to make it happen. In the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate him. Give him a...